Let's stick with real L people. L Lady Trump, yeah, yeah. Lady Trump, does I, Russell I Brand... I was going to say, yes. what, what do you think your reaction would have been if it had been Miliband's elder brother? Well, I think if it had been Miliband's elder brother, I think it would have been the same as what we had before. It would be very difficult for those of us who disagreed with the, the worst excesses of New Labour to support someone. I happen to think that Ed Miliband is a different kind of, of Labour Party leader. And I'm, I'm very disappointed with what he said about Scotland this week because I think he would have... Hold that thought, Billy Bragg, because well. we're, we're, no, we're, just, we're heading north. We are, we are indeed heading up to Scotland now to see precisely how the worm performed during his comments about the SNP and, and his exhortation to Labour voters in Scotland to vote for him rather than for Nicola Sturgeon's party. Um, you can see here that in, in the south the response was, was fairly neutral. Um, in the Midlands, uh, distinctly negative. And this is really interesting. This is Ed Miliband appealing to Scottish voters to, to vote for him and they were gloriously, gloriously um, unimpressed. Let's, let's speak to Mari Gray, who um, well, used to be a Labour voter, Mari. You've since migrated to the SNP. Did Mr Miliband's uh, heartfelt appeal, did it butter any parsnips with you? Oh, absolutely not. His behaviour was just incredible. Um, the guy is sleepwalking into oblivion. Why? would he abandon a dream of becoming Prime Minister when he's so close, uh, taking his bat and ball home, saying that uh, he wouldn't talk to Nicola Sturgeon? Is it because she's Scottish? Is it because she's a female? What's wrong with the guy? You know, it, 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 there's been uh, an offer put on the table for him from someone from a nation who has given this union so much. You know, the very latest one, the Higgs boson, uh, the God particle, the telephone, the steam engine, blah, oh, briefly, you know. We are, we are covering a lot of territory tonight, so Mari, and, and, and you, you've contributed um, a lot. Uh, Daniel Hannan, this must... I mean, you probably presumed we'd be talking about the breakup of the European Union by this point in a, in a Conservative-led government. Instead, we're talking about the breakup of the Union. It must... I mean, it, it's oh. a sad prospect. It is, and, but actually, I think... And it's been Nicholas caused by the Conservatives. clever. Well, there was a referendum which pretty much <coughs> settled the issue for the time being in Scotland. I mean, you can't come back and ask people the same question twice. And I think Nicola Sturgeon has accepted that. She said it before the campaign. She said it since. But I think she's actually hit on a new tactic, which is if you can't turn Scottish voters against the union, try to turn English voters mm. against the union. Get into a position in Westminster where you can so tilt the balance of advantage in the minds of people south of the border, that they become the new separatists. There, there's the, you, you can't possibly be claiming that this is achieved solely by Sturgeon. The, the, the Conservative Party have been absolutely throwing fuel upon the fire of her uh, I, rhetoric. And actually, they, no, if I, anything, have been, have been doing more to undermine faith in the union. You can see the, the, the response since they started weaponising uh, the SNP. It's, it's, it's had a boost you know, in the long, polls already. Long before there was the vow, the Conservative Party had unilaterally offered something very close to full fiscal autonomy in Scotland and has gone much further than Labour will ever go because of, for, for, for reasons that we're yeah. all aware of. Labour needs Scottish really MPs for its Westminster majority. I, I could see uh, Devo Max being part of a new devolved settlement throughout the British Isles. I, I think, I mean, I, I've always thought that would be a good thing to do anyway, but even if I didn't think that, it was plainly the option that most Scottish people wanted. You know, if you, if you ask them before the heat of the referendum campaign, a small number wanted complete separation, a small number wanted the status quo or to go back to pre-devolution, but the vast majority said, we want full autonomy within the UK. You know, foreign affairs and defence, but internal home. I think that's a pretty, that's reason enough to offer it. And if you do that north of the border, that implies similar and equivalent devolution in England and Wales, or at least in counties and cities in England, if not for the whole of England. I'm happy to argue that one one way or the other. Uh, wouldn't that leave us all better off? And what I find bizarre is that the SNP won't contemplate taking that deal from a Conservative because they don't like Conservatives, even though it could give them more autonomy. But that's, that's their issue, not and, mine. And, and they're not here to explain themselves. Lady Trumpington, you are still here, for which we're enormously grateful. Do, do you, are you surprised or, or, or troubled or neither by the I'm role... I'm listening to the flow of information. I, I know, it's hypnotic, and, uh, isn't it? But, but are you wise, surprised yes. at the role Scotland is playing in this, in this no, general election? No, I'm not election? a bit surprised. Not a bit. Uh, I only think that it's been up to a point not terribly well handled 
But I do think that we've got very, very good people on the job uh, now. I think that the Scots realise that, that I, I think they realised they were asking for far too much uh, in there. And she's a good debater, that lady, a very good debater. But uh, I do think that she's asked for too much and it's been sort of laid wide well, open. She, she'd have got it all off you, Daniel. Do you know, I, I've really agreed when you, what you call the long historical list of the steam engine and the telephone. I mean, let's remember the things that, as a United Kingdom, we've given to the world. Ending slavery, defeating two attempts to unite Europe, not in democracy, well, but in, in military dictatorship. You know, uh, liberating hundreds of millions of Better people together. from communism. You know, well, don't, don't, don't toss it all away without a thought. If we, can, if we can rebalance the settlement in a way that people are happy with, giving more internal devolution and democracy to all the constituent parts of the UK, that would settle the issue. And do you know what? I have a feeling that that's what Salmon is afraid of. He, well, he doesn't, he, he'd rather keep the grievances Dr going. Dr 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 I was just going to say about the slave trade, ending the slave trade, that was kind of an individual country thing. We didn't end the whole of the slave trade right, right. across the world. But, uh, but should we not be very proud, reader, of the fact that even when we were in a life and death struggle against Napoleon, we were diverting ships to try and stamp out the disgusting Atlantic traffic. That's, that's something that all British people should take pride in. I mean, there's a lot to take, to take pride in. You know, when I think about the SNP, it's interesting. When I'm talking to people, lots of people are saying to me they're not really that engaged with this election. However, what people are saying they have been engaged with is Nicola Sturgeon. Mm. And what they see in her, regardless of what you think she might do in terms of power, is someone who's passionate. They link her to a campaign in Scotland, whatever you might think about that campaign to getting young people getting on the streets, using their feet in a way I haven't actually seen with English young people. So there's, there's something, something I think, on. for people to admire about Scotland. Uh, and yeah, of course, we don't know where it's going to lead. Billy Bragg, oh, I know and you campaigned for, for, for the yes side mm. during did, yeah. the referendum. Did you really? um, I didn't there's, know that. There's a, pro there's a prospect, of course, of it coming about through uh, unexpected circumstances. Mm. Not just yet, but what, what would you, uh, in a, in a post-union Britain, what do you think England would look like? Well, I think there will be compulsory Morris dancing. Uh, I think there'll be bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover. I think there'll be jam for tea. I think uh, these feet in ancient times walk upon England's...